Hey guys, it's Edward. So today, I wanted to go over a technique that I think is overlooked when doing leak code problems and the interview. Specifically, I mean being able to draw out the stack trace. I get a lot of questions about how to improve a recursion or how to not really mess up when explaining your solution or diving into it. And I really think this is because people don't understand what exactly their code is supposed to do or how to step through it. I'm going to show you how to simulate the stack trace when it comes to recursion. Now you can apply this to any function if you really wanted to. So let's start with a very simple traversal. I've written some code here on the right that actually shows a simple LRV traversal. The only thing I've added here is this little counter where every single time we visit a node, we will actually add a counter to it. Now, what is the expected output of this? Well, because the traversal is void, then we actually get no output. But this counter over here, we should actually expect it to have a value of six once we're finished. So the question is, how do we prove this? How do we go through this code step by step through this tree in order to prove that we will end up with six as the counter variable value? So let's start with the traversal. We're going to start with at node one, right? And here's how I draw the stack trace. Now I draw it out kind of looking like a stack. And then I put the node that we are visiting. I'll identify that node somehow, usually using the value here. Let's actually look, traverse through the node. If the node is equal to null, we're going to return. Well. The no first node we're looking at is obviously not null. It has a value in it. And so the next step here is look at this counter plus plus. So counter is a class variable that we've created, and we're going to give it a value of one to indicate that it is going up from zero to one. Now we traverse to the left. Now, as you can see here, we're going to be going into the recursion with the value on the left, which is two. So I need to remember where I am at, at my current node at my current function call. So for me, what I usually do is I look for some characteristic, some keyword that is unique to the line and use that as my identifier. In this case, I'm going to pick specifically left. For one, left is only available in this particular line. The other thing is that it tells us where in the traversal we're actually going to go. And very often, this left or right will actually be your identifier when it comes to any kind of tree problem because a lot of them involve recursion. So back to the problem. I see here that I'm going to be traversing to the node left, which is two. I'm going to push another function call to the stack here and use two as my identifier, because this is a value that's unique to the node that I'm looking at. So back to the top of the function call. If the node is equal to null return, well, the value of the node is not null. Counter counter is going to be plus plus. So now this value would be, goes from one to two. Perfect. And traverse, we're going to traverse to the left again. We're going to do exactly what we just did for node one. We're going to mark it with left because this is our identifier for at least for this line. So we remember where we're at and then we're going to look at the left value, which is four. Add four to the function call stack and begin again. Traverse node is not null counter plus plus. The left value is null. So how do we represent this? Well, I'm just going to write null here back to the top of the function call. I'm at node equals null return. So how do I draw out a return? I'm just going to evict this from the function call stack to indicate that the function is completed. We're back here, back where we left off at this line. Notice here that because I have this key identifier here that I can match it up immediately to this. So we know that the identifier that we've written here is good. And so we go to the next function, traversing at to the right. So what do I do here? I'm going to update this in order to say right, because this is the next function that we're calling. Then I'm going to add this to the stack trace, null, and back to the top of the function we go. Node is equal to null, return. Cool. Function is completed. It returned. We're going to pop this off the stack. Go back to where we were before. For right. Oh, we were right back here. So now the function is going to complete. And so we can pop this one off the stack as well. And so we go back to where we left off at two. We look at the next line. Oh, we're going to go to the right. So update this to right. The value of the right node is null. Push null onto the stack, go to the top of the function call and say, oh, node is equal to null. We're going to return. Pop this off. And we go back to where we left off with the node two. We're back here. Oh, no more function to do. So now the function will return. Pop this off. Let me clean this up. And we pick up where we left off with node one. Ah, we just popped out of this function call. Let's go to the next one. We're at right. 
Well, what's the right value of one? Three. So we're going to push three to our call stack and begin at the top of the function. If node is equal to null, return. Well, not null. Counter plus plus. Four. Traverse to the left. Left node is five. Five. Back to the top of the function. If node is equal to null, return. Nope. Counter plus plus. Traverse the node to the left. Okay. But the left of the node is null. And now, node is equal to... And now, we arrive back at the top of the function. Node is equal to null. So now we return. Pick up where we left off with 5. Then, we're going to go to the right. Right of 5 is null. Back to the top of the function. Node is equal to null. Return. Pop this off. We're done with right. We're done with five as well because the last last because right is the last function call. So now we pick up where we left off with three. Go to the right, which is six. Back to the top of the function. Node is equal to null. Return not null. Counter plus plus six. Traverse to the left. Mark where we left off. Null is pushed onto the stack. Begin at the top of the function. Null, node is equal to null. Return. Function is finished. Pick up where we left off with 6. Here. Now we go to the right. Add null to the stack. Back to the top of the function. Node is equal to null. Return. Pop this function off the stack. Now we have 6. Right. Pick up where we left off. No more function to go through. Pop this off the stack. Right. Now three is now three is at right. Now I pick up where we left off with three. No more function call. Pop this off the stack. Pick up where we left off with one, right? No more function call. Pop this off the stack. As you can see here, I was able to go through the entire problem, the entire recursion, just by going through this one test case. I was able to guide you through my thinking. I was able to guide you through what's happening. And of course, a lot of it became redundant towards the end because once we understood the pattern of how null interacted with the test case, we could pretty much go through it without having to explain it. Of course, I did it for you guys, but you obviously understood what exactly was going to happen since I had already done that before. So what I want you to take away from this is that you need to be able to do this for any recursion statement that you make, for any kind of function that you make. For anything that you do, you need to be able to visually draw it out. And I'm only showing you one way to do it for one type of problem. There are many different types of problems, like graphs, arrays, whatever. You need to be able to draw it out, no matter what problem you're doing, so that way you can explain it to the interviewer. When Lego tells you that you fucked up on a problem, they will also give you the test case that it actually failed against. And it's really important that you step through this test case step by step in order to figure out where your problem is. This will help you figure out where the flaw in your thinking is and how you can avoid it the next time. Furthermore, by doing this on the actual interview, you can actually show the interviewer you know exactly what you're talking about and you have an, a very good idea of where your code is going. Finally, it forces you to practice being careful and making your code compact. After all, you can't read extremely dense code, parse through it, and be able to accurately represent it without messing yourself up very easily. So doing this technique will actually force you to write code that is simpler so that way, you have an easier time when stepping through it. So, that'll do for me. Let me know if you like this video and you want to see more small tidbits like this. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.